Today we are going to learn about Bohr's model for the hydrogen atom. This is a brief explanation for what is known as the emission spectra for an element. There is an emission spectrum that appears at the bottom of this slide and it includes just four lines of light. A red line, a turquoise line, a blue line, and a violet line. These are the kinds of light waves that are given off by the hydrogen atom. Now this presentation is going to be interactive, so I need your participation, and when I ask a question, I'd like you to respond. It's okay if you feel silly talking to your computer screen. It's all part of learning. This model begins with a nucleus at the center, with a single proton in it, since this is for hydrogen, and rings for the electrons known as orbits. These rings are simply numbered, n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. In Bohr's model, the electron always finds itself in one of these orbits. Which orbit do you think the electron prefers to be in? That's right. It prefers to be in n equals 1, the lowest energy orbit. And so, just as gravity holds a planet in orbit around its star, opposite charge keeps this electron moving around the nucleus. But that's not the end of the story. The electron does not remain in n equals 1. This electron can be moved to a higher energy orbit. In this case, the electron has jumped up to n equals 4. Would that process be an endothermic or an exothermic process? Correct. This is endothermic. Endothermic because energy was absorbed. This puts the electron in what's known as an excited state. So why is this electron not in n equals 6? Why was it only excited to n equals 4? What would have to happen for that electron to get up to n equals 6? Well, the electron would need more energy. It wasn't excited with enough energy to move it to n equals 6. You might remember that the different types of light all have different amounts of energy. So depending on the type of light or the amount of energy of that light, this will determine how far the electron moves. Now, the excited electron does not remain in the excited state. Where does that excited electron prefer to be? That's right, it wants to be in n equals 1, the ground state. And so it will fall back down to the relaxed state where it began. Will this process be endothermic or exothermic? Correct. This is exothermic because energy was given off. And where did that energy go? And in what form was that energy given off? Let's watch that transition again. The electron moves from n equals 4 back to n equals 1, and as it does, it releases a photon of energy in the form of light. Now let's consider the following transitions. Here's an electron in n equals 6, and that electron falls down to n equals 2. In another transition, my electron begins in n equals 5, and it also falls down to n equals 2. Each of these transitions I'm illustrating now has a corresponding wave of energy that is given off. From n equals 4 to 2 gives off green light, and finally from n equals 3 to 2 gives off red light. So these series of transitions each are accompanied by the emission of some electromagnetic radiation. What do all of these transitions have in common? Well, yes, obviously they involve an electron. No, I'm talking about something else they have in common. They all take an electron down to not the ground state, but n equals 2. Another thing they all have in common is they give off light that we can see, called visible light. Will this process be endothermic or exothermic? Obviously, this is giving off energy. That makes it exothermic. And where does that energy go? Just like before, the energy is just given off. It's emitted. It goes out from the atom. And finally, in what form is that energy released? Yes, once again, it's releasing energy in the form of light. Now remember, electromagnetic radiation 
may be visible if it is the right energy or the right size of a light wave. Some of that energy we cannot see. The interesting thing about these emissions is that they each involve the kind of energy that our eye can detect. This series of electron transitions is known as the Balmer series, and each of the types of light given off are all visible light. Now let's look at another electron. This one begins in n equals 4. I want you to notice that it falls all the way down to n equals 1. This kind of transition is part of a different series, known as the Lyman series. And when electrons fall all the way down to n equals 1, they give off a type of light we cannot detect. They give off ultraviolet light. What do you know about the energy of ultraviolet light compared to the energy of visible light? Correct. Ultraviolet radiation has higher energy, which can be explained by the larger fall by the electron going all the way down to n equals 1. So these series of waves given off by this electron transition are not visible to us. They all fall in the ultraviolet range of the spectrum. All right, let's see if you understand this electron transition stuff. So now we're going to take our electron and move it a small amount from n equals 4 down to n equals 3. My question is, what kind of energy do you think this gives off? Yes, yes, of course it's electromagnetic radiation, but what part of the spectrum? No, it's not red light. Red light corresponds to a 3 to 2 transition, but this is even less energy than red light. Right, this is infrared radiation. When the electron makes a small transition, this is part of the passion series for hydrogen. And this kind of radiation is also invisible to us. We don't see this, but it is lower energy infrared light that's given off. So in summary, an emission spectrum is all the different types of radiation given off when electrons in an atom transition in between the possible positions. For hydrogen, this emission spectrum is fairly simple. Since it only has one electron, and the positions of that electron are fairly well described. Keep in mind that when we see an emission spectrum, we're only seeing part of it. We see the visible light given off. Electron transitions also typically give off ultraviolet radiation and infrared radiation. So I hope this explanation helps you better understand how the structure of an atom relates to the energy that it gives off.